In the age of semi and fully autonomous cars, it might feel that there's not much new cars can't do. Active lane keep assist keeps your car in the right place on the road. A suite of sensors help the car see the world around it braking or swerving to avoid accidents. And in the case of some automakers, advanced cloud-based artificial intelligence running the latest in machine learning algorithms, learn from your car's every move so that one day it may take over your driving duties completely. So when the headlines pronounce that Toyota and its luxury brand Lexus are readying a talking car for production in just three years time, you might be forgiven for thinking that future cars from the brand will use a natural language interface and do away with all of the switches and buttons that you'd find in a car today. Except that's not quite what's going on, at least not right now. Now, what we're talking about is cars that talk to one another using something called a dedicated short-range communication system that allows cars to talk to each other electronically in real time. This communication has become known as vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle or V2V communication. But what is vehicle to vehicle and what is DSRC and how can they work to make our time on the road safer? I'm glad you asked. In much the same way as many countries require airplanes to be equipped with emergency transponders on board that helps ground radar to keep a track of them in the sky, vehicle to vehicle communication relies on a radio transmitter located in each car that can transmit important information about the car's location and speed to other vehicles in the area. In airplanes, of course, the Model C transponder that airplanes flying above a certain altitude have to use is a little more hands-on than V2V technology being developed for cars. But the principle is the same. It helps advertise a plane's presence. The vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle technology being promised by Toyota and Lexus for 2021 model year cars onwards transmits special information about the car, its speed and its location over a dedicated 5.9 gigahertz radio band. Each car, equipped with a transmitter and receiver, can triangulate other vehicles in real time, allowing the car or the driver to better react to what's going on around them or it. The idea behind vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle isn't exactly new, nor is using a specific radio frequency to allow a car to transmit its identity and location. In fact, using the 5.9 gigahertz band for this kind of communication has been in existence in some form or another for nearly 20 years, albeit in a slightly different form. Intelligent transportation systems. And if you live in an area with toll roads or bridges, the chances are you already have such a transponder in your vehicle. You see, ITS is the backbone of the wireless transmitters that let you pass through toll plazas without stopping. In that case, the transmitters broadcast a special unique identification to the sensors on the toll booths as you go past. The computer system at the toll booth then charges your account accordingly. ITS is also used in some cities as a way of keeping track of public transit. For example, buses often have their own transmitters on board, and when they pass under or pass by certain street furniture, their real-time location is transmitted back to a central data processing facility, which can then relay information to smart bus shelters about when your next bus is due. DSRC is the next evolutionary step in that system. Rather than simply be a transmitter or a receiver, DSRC allows for real-time communication between cars, traffic lights, parking meters, and more. And its application in the real world could be life-saving. For example, imagine driving along a rural road where visibility is impaired due to hedgerows or the terrain of the road. Two cars fitted with V2V will be able to react to or alert their respective drivers that there's another vehicle nearby long before the drivers themselves could see each other. Paired with a simple alert system, the driver or drivers can take appropriate action earlier than they would if they were relying just on their eyes. Or in the age of semi-autonomous technology, the car might even take over to ensure a collision does not happen. Given T-bone accidents are some of the most common types of accidents and the most fatal, a technology like V2V could even help reduce mortality rates. It's not just about accident avoidance or billing either. DSRC equipped lights, for example, could change their sequencing not via timing but based where vehicles are relative to the junction, ensuring whenever possible that a car approaching a quiet intersection could be given a green light at just the right time to continue on its way without stopping which has energy saving benefits. Push it one step further, and DSRC could even be used to alert road users of emergency vehicles, cutting down the delays caused by distracted drivers not responding to sirens or lights. It goes too without saying that DSRC would also give deaf drivers much more advanced warning 
of emergency vehicles approaching, helping them to spot and locate emergency vehicles long before they appear in the rear mirror. Beyond that, well, DSRC frequency communications between vehicles and street furniture could, in time, be used to alert cars of poor traction or adverse weather, notify others of an accident ahead, and ultimately allow autonomous vehicles to operate with a higher level of competency on the road. Toyota may be the first to bring DSRC V2V and V2I communications to market, but keep your eyes out on this technology moving forward because it's going to become the must-have safety feature in your next car. That's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this channel. And also, if you fancy it, why not subscribe to our new channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, which is a little more behind the scenes, hangouts and some more fun things. And of course, if you'd like to support this channel, you know what to do. Follow the links below. That's it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep evolving. That's it. Thanks for joining me and see you next time.